percebo. Se você percebe. Percebes? Se puxa os pies. Percebes? <risos> policipos, policipos. Uma arregada. Duas arregadas. Esto es la raspa o la rasqueta. Lo diesel. Pues la distancia. On the southwest coast of Europe, stocked barnacles have been consumed for thousands of years. Today, hundreds of fishers risk their lives on the cliffs in search of this delicacy, also known as goose or gooseneck barnacles. In Brittany, professional barnacle harvesters sell their catch on the Spanish market, usually through Spanish intermediaries. They share the coast with amateur harvesters who keep alive a local culinary tradition with a scarce presence in the rest of France. The situation is similar in Portugal. Although there, stocked barnacles are highly valued and the number of professionals and amateurs is much higher. Intense competition among fishers can lead to resource depletion. This is known as the tragedy of the commons, a pernicious trap from which it is difficult to escape and which affects a large number of fisheries around the world. In the Spanish region of Galicia, concern over the state of the barnacle stock in the 1990s led to the use of a management method which is unusual in Europe. In Galicia, only local harvesters can exploit the coast around them. No external fishers can dispute the seafood. This is known as territorial use rights for fisheries. In exchange for this privilege, the fishers must respect scientific recommendations and report their catches in detail. And most importantly, they must negotiate with the fisheries administration who, when, how, and where the barnacles should be extracted in their area. That is, they have to co-manage the resource. This method represents a radical change of mentality. It allows the harvesters to agree to reserve areas or to rotate them in a way which is similar to when farmers let land lie fallow. The barnacle is no longer the prize in a competition, but an investment in a great bank that is the sea. In Asturias, on the north coast of Spain, territorial use rights are also applied. Within their zones, the harvesters devote each small rock to a different use. This spatial micromanagement is one of many innovations that have arisen spontaneously as a consequence of co-management. Each rock is a small plot that receives a different treatment. Stalked barnacles are not the only species that inhabit these surf zones. The plots are a mosaic of patches occupied by mussels, algae, limpets, other types of barnacles, and a great diversity of other organisms. All very different, but with two things in common their ability to survive in a hostile environment and to compete for space, the scarcest resource on the rocky intertidal coast. The open gaps are quickly filled by fast-growing species. These are displaced by other species that are slower but have a greater ability to compete. In a way, 
This process is similar to the way a wound heals. Some species succeed others until the original system is restored. This continuous process of destruction and regeneration keeps the ecosystem out of equilibrium and is one of the main causes of the intertidal mosaic and its diversity. The analysis of these interactions represents one of the most fascinating and productive fields of modern ecology. The ability to easily add or remove species or to manipulate the available resources has turned the rocky shore into an outdoor laboratory for generations of ecologists. Experiments have allowed us to understand the regeneration of spaces that have been left empty by disturbances, such as storms or human exploitation. When harvesters extract barnacles with their tools, empty spaces of bare rock are left between the barnacles. Understanding how these gaps regenerate during the following months would be very important for the sustainable use of the species. Fishers have their own ideas about this process. After all, they spend many hours at sea. In my opinion, according to the reproduction of stalked barnacles, the gaps will be recolonized by stalked barnacles. If this does not happen, then it will be mussels or macroalgae. Sometimes when you harvest and there are large mussels, the barnacles are really thin because the mussels grow over them. However, stalked barnacles grow quite well in patches of small, young mussels, perhaps because they offer protection and a better grip. But if the mussels are too large, they grow over the barnacles. The abundance of mussels depends very much on the wave force. In winter, if the sea is rough, it removes the mussels. But when the sea is calm, they grow again. Their populations recover when the water is calmer and warmer. Increasingly, scientists adopt these ideas as hypotheses in their own investigations. The European research network Biodiversa identified the interest of the stocked barnacle fishery as an example for other fisheries in Europe. In 2017, six universities and research centers in the Atlantic Arc launched the Perceves project, focused on understanding the regeneration of their populations and their sustainable exploitation. This is a fantastic opportunity to apply the same methodology and determine, in the case of stalked barnacles, if the effects of bands and marine reserves are the same throughout their distribution range. In Portugal, Brittany or Asturias. One part of the project consisted of the installation of metal cages to protect the barnacle areas and observe the regeneration of the empty spaces left after capture. What we pursue with these cages is to prevent them from being exploited by the harvesters. They are covered by a thick metal grid which is sufficiently fine to hinder the collection of barnacles, so that nobody would waste any time in harvesting in such an inaccessible plot. But sufficiently coarse to let the water through so that the barnacles do not sense any special protection. The evolution of the barnacle populations in these cages was compared with that of other areas that were not protected. Evaluating the footprint of human exploitation on the ecosystem and the intertidal landscape.
In July 2017, the experiment began simultaneously in the French region of Brittany, on the Spanish coasts of Galicia and Asturias, and in the Alentejo region of Portugal. But the Perceves project addresses another problem that is no less important and much more mysterious. An invisible thread connects some rocks with others, even over long distances, larval transport. Barnacles are hermaphrodites and their reproduction is complex. In these unique images obtained by Portuguese researchers, we can observe, despite their low resolution, how the individuals that act like males have a long penis with which they are able to reach other individuals in the same group. The sperm fertilizes the eggs, which remain inside the adult until they hatch, to give rise to small larvae known as nauplii. The larvae are released during the day and at high tides. Once in the water, these larvae remain adrift for between one and three months, after which they become cypress larvae, already able to attach to the coast again. Unlike other benthic marine organisms that settle on rocks, cypress larvae attach to the peduncles of already developed individuals. From that moment on, the fixed individuals transform, increase in size, and gradually migrate towards the lower part of the individual on which they have settled. When the barnacles are fully developed, they are thus incorporated into a clump of adult barnacles. After several weeks drifting with the currents, the larvae have been able to travel great distances and cross borders. Thus, the abundance of barnacles in an area may be affecting the health of populations far away from their place of birth. The unknowns about this fascinating journey may be another key to the health and abundance of stocked barnacle populations. At the University of Aveiro and at the School of Engineering in Brittany, they have been developing biophysical models of larval transport for several years. Most marine species, whether fishes or invertebrates, present a larval phase in their life cycle. Those larvae are transported by the currents. Understanding the mechanisms and patterns of larval transport is fundamental to understanding the dynamics of marine populations. A model that simulates the currents is seeded with a population of virtual larvae which swim as true larvae do, live as long as real larvae, and remain on the coast when they reach the state of Cyprus. But all this happens in the virtual world of a supercomputer. We are in the computer center at the University of Aveiro, which contains the computers which perform the calculations to simulate the dispersal and dynamics of the lava in the framework of the Persebes project. The power of this computer center is comparable to that of 1,500 personal desktop computers and is concentrated in this system, which we call Argus. But the supercomputer feeds on data, lots of data. The model's predictions are refined by observations of the number of larvae that live in each area. This is done by collecting samples at many times and locations to examine and count the cyprids present on the peduncles of the adults.
but the manpower of the research team is limited and many sampling sites are difficult to access. Fortunately, an increasing number of fishers concerned about the state of the resource collaborate with researchers and administrations. The Percebes project has turned to them to collect these samples. This type of collaboration is becoming more frequent and makes it possible to expand the scale of research. Very often, the fisher's only interest is to be informed of the results and how they can be applied to improve the management of the resource. In July 2017, a large group of researchers from the Percebes project and an even larger group of barnacle harvesters began their study on stocked barnacles in the Atlantic Arc. Visits to the human exclusion experiment occur every month. During these visits, the cages are opened and the surfaces are photographed to observe the changes in the mosaic of species in the intertidal system and in the populations of barnacles. In parallel, the harvesters obtain samples to estimate the larval fixation that will allow the researchers to refine the transport models. The sea has allowed them to work well until the month of November. But very soon the situation will change. The force of the storm impacts squarely on the cages of the experiment lifting entire layers of barnacles, mussels, and algae. It's hard to know if the other cages have withstood the storms, but we hope so. The ecosystem is very dynamic. Physical stress and strong competition for space are the key to thriving here. It seems that of all the species, the stalked barnacles are the ones that best withstood the storm. While mussels are attached to rocks by scourer-like filaments, called bissi, stalked barnacles use a strong organic cement that has attracted the attention of many laboratories for its extraordinary properties. The fishers have resumed sampling, and the collection of frozen samples continues periodically. But not everything happens at sea. The first results of the larval transport models indicate that the populations of Portugal are disconnected from their northern neighbors in Galicia and Asturias. The long beaches in the north of the country are an almost insurmountable barrier. However, Galicia and Asturias are strongly connected. The analysis of the photographs begins to offer a vision of an unknown, dynamic and amazing world. The photos make it possible to identify the gaps left by the barnacle harvesters on the rocks. The regeneration of those empty spaces is slower than expected. Two years later, many have still not recovered. Population growth occurs preferentially from the spreading of previously existing barnacle patches. For this reason, in intensely harvested rocks where no barnacles are left, recovery does not occur, and other species colonize the space. Another surprise, the larvae not only settle on the adults, they also attach to the rocks. These isolated colonizers are usually associated with the presence of Lytophyllum tortuosum, an encrusting alga that looks like a coral. Its crevices and hollows seem to offer a safe haven for the cypress. Dense groups of mussels also favor the appearance of new barnacle patches. 
The researchers also discovered gaps produced during closed seasons. The most likely cause, poaching. Poaching is the big problem of this fishery. In times of economic crisis, the rocks reserved by the harvesters represent an attractive booty. The poachers operate at night, sometimes with scuba tanks, and collect hundreds of kilos of barnacles, far more than the quotas that professional fishers are allowed. They frequently visit remote sites, which have numerous escape routes and are difficult to monitor, and sell these barnacles directly to restaurants and retailers. The problem reaches a transnational dimension when Spanish poachers operate in Brittany, where stocked barnacles are just beginning to be exploited and the resource is not so highly appreciated. There is a bit of everything. We have observed organized teams of Spanish poachers who arrived with all-terrain vehicles, inflatable boats and trailers, and have made trips to Morbihan and Finisterre. Some of those poachers are apparently legal exporters who use their travels to extract barnacles illegally. In this way, Spanish poachers compete fraudulently with Breton harvesters, whose market is also Spanish. Poaching is a difficult phenomenon to control. It endangers the new systems of exclusive use of the territory and threatens the hope of achieving a sustainable exploitation of the resource. Guards represent a considerable expenditure for the administration. And a few people are not enough to control huge stretches of coastline. That is why they are beginning to resort to new technologies. For example, analyzing the atomic composition of the shells can help identify the origin of barnacles sold in a bar. Drones are also beginning to be used for more effective surveillance, since they can be equipped with night vision. Some solutions to poaching are in the hands of the harvesters. In the case of Cangas, in Galicia, co-management has evolved into a more complex and cooperative organization for the barnacle harvesters. They watch over the rocks together with a large group of guards hired by the harvesters themselves. In this way, they hinder poaching, even sanctioning harvesters from their own guild. It is in these places where the ability of the co-management systems to develop solutions tailored to each problem is best appreciated. After a second winter without major incidents, the experimental phase of the project comes to an end. The experimental structures are disassembled and the models are fed the latest data collected. The results will see the light in specialized journals. But the project owes a debt to the harvesters. Fishers frequently complain that they do not get to know the results of the projects in which they collaborate. Technical publications are too complex and their dissemination requires an extra effort on the part of the researchers. The non-governmental organization World Wildlife Fund carries out intense activities to promote sustainable fishing. For this reason, the Percebes project has teamed up with them to hold a workshop to share the results with harvesters, administration officers, researchers, and non-governmental organizations. At the workshop, they can gain access to the preliminary results of the project, compare them with their own experiences, and exchange those experiences with other professionals. The findings will feed into future policies that will help manage the resource in a sustainable way. 
Like anyone else, the harvesters are curious. They are intrigued to know what happens on those rocks that they visit so frequently. They appreciate the existence of interactions between species and the effects of their activity on the structure of the community. But seeing these processes reflected clearly and explicitly in these photos is fascinating. That fascination is the most valuable reward for researchers. The models reveal that larval dispersal reaches hundreds of kilometers in different directions. Our local actions can have an impact over great distances, and the management design must take into account the crossing of borders. What we have found is that territorial use rights in the long term represent a key incentive to the fishers because the sense of property prompts them to get involved in the management and monitoring of the resource and allows for the emergence of co-management, which is a shared responsibility between the fishers and the administration when it comes to making decisions. We have seen that co-management increases the sustainability of the fisheries, both in economic and ecological terms. Transfer of territorial use rights, co-management, management tools that could guarantee the future of marine resources in Europe. Perhaps the example of the stalked barnacles can be applied to other fisheries. But this is only possible with the help of the fishers themselves. They are the most interested group. Only rationality and collaboration will allow the survival of an ancestral way of life, that of the hunters and gatherers of the sea. After all, they have been doing it for millennia. Por fin. <laughs>